Most developers who work with Prisma in their projects will work with Prisma ORM, so the TypeSafe ORM that gives us database access in a TypeSafe fashion. The other thing that they'll often work with is Prisma Migrate, and often this goes hand in hand with Prisma ORM. Today, let's take a look at Prisma Migrate more specifically and the commands that will get us started in a project with Prisma Migrate and also what migrations are in general. So we have got this project here, one model, which is this user model, and we're working with a SQLite database in this case, just to show off what we have here. I've got this migrations directory in the Prisma directory here. We've got two migrations. So if you're unfamiliar with migrations, you might be wondering what the heck this stuff is. This first one has got a timestamp and then underscore init. Init was the name that I gave to this migration. If we look inside of it, we have got this migration.sql file. And what we see here is a SQL command, create table user. Now, what happened to get us to this state where I've got this SQL file in this directory in the migrations folder here is I ran a Prisma command to do some migration work. And if you're not too familiar with the concept of migrations in general, essentially it's a pattern or a concept, a way for us to be able to affect changes to our database over the course of time and to be able to track that history. And importantly, it gives us the ability to replay all of those changes that have gone into effect over the course of time. So you can imagine we might have a migrations directory that is full of migrations that have happened over the years. What we could do if we were setting up a new developer on our team is we could have them get their workspace set up, get everything ready in their environment files, and then have them spin up a local database where they replay all of those migrations to get their database into the exact state that it is currently matching in production. And the tools that we get from Prisma Migrate allow us to be able to produce all of these SQL files and run that history as we talked about. All right, so the state that we're in right now with our SQLite database is we've already got some tables in place by way of these migrations. Let's do this though, let's just start fresh. So we're going to delete migrations there. We're actually going to delete dev.db and the journal DB as well. We're gonna move those to the trash and we're going to start fresh, but let's start fresh with Prisma Postgres as opposed to SQLite. So let's come up here to our provider and we'll say we want Postgres. Then we'll say that's going to take a database URL from our environment file. But as of right now, there's nothing in our environment file. Let's change that by getting a Prisma Postgres database wired up. All right, so over here at console.prisma.io, we'll click to start a new project. I'm going to call this one migrations. Let's say get started with Prisma Postgres and we'll choose the default region of US East. So we are provisioning, and then this is going to move along into the state of connected just there. And what we get here with Prisma Postgres is a serverless database that is based on unikernels. And one key feature of that is it means there are no cold starts for our databases. So if they go to sleep, they boot right back up the next time that we access them. All right, so let's grab these keys. We've got a database URL and a pulse API key. We can click to copy. Then back over here in the environment file, we can paste those in. Let's now open up the terminal here. So I've got the terminal over here in cursor. What I'll do is I'm going to remove these fields so we can get ourselves into a starting point that gives us a more minimal model here. All right, so we've got our user model. So the first command that we're going to focus on here is one that we're going to typically use when we're in development. And that is npx prisma migrate dev. So migrate dev is a command that you're probably going to run quite a lot. And what this is going to do is it will create that migration directory with the SQL file that we saw, and it will apply that change against our target database all in one go. So if we hit enter now, we're going to be prompted for a name for this migration. And typically what we can do is we can call that first migration init or something like that. All right, so enter a name for the migration, we will call it init. All right, so our Prisma client generated against that migration. And importantly, we've got this migrations directory with an init migration. And there is our table, create table user. Now we've actually got some seed data set up here over in seed.ts, just a couple of user records. So why don't we do npx Prisma DB seed? We're going to do that to get our seed data into our database. Okay, the C command has been executed, that's great. Why don't we take a look in Prisma Studio to see our data in place. So over here, let's click Studio. And there's our three records. We've got Alice, Bob, and Carol all set to go in the database. So now let's talk about what happens when we want to go and make a change to our schema. So we can come back over to our schema and let's say we wanted to add some fields. We had these previously like address line one, that should be a string. 
We'll fill out the rest there. I'm gonna make all of these optional actually. So we'll make all of those optional. Now what we could do to get ourselves into a state where we've got the database using this schema is we could just run a command like we had before, which is npx migrate dev. We'd give it a name like add address or something like that. But I think what we'll do just to demo things for the next topic here is let's run npx prisma migrate dev like we had, and then we'll do create only. That's a flag we can pass to say that we only want to create this migration. We'll create a folder for it and a file for it, but we won't actually run it against our database. So migrate dev with a create only flag. We got a prompt for the name that can be add address fields. And the note that we get here is that we have got our migration file, but it has not been applied. And then we can actually edit that file and then we can apply it by running Prisma Migrate Dev. Now we could apply it with Prisma Migrate Dev, but there's another command that I want to show right here, which is Prisma Migrate Deploy. And this is a command that we're typically not going to use in local development here, but it is something that we'll use when we go out to any kind of remote environment, like a development, staging, or prod environment. And the idea is this, when we run Prisma Migrate Dev, we're going to have our migration files in place, they get produced, they get applied against our local databases or some remote database that we might be working with. And then when we go to commit our changes to source control and those changes affect a deployment, we need to run a Prisma Migrate Deploy command to have those changes take effect against whatever our target database is in those environments. So for example, when we merge up to get our changes into production, we'd want to run this command in that pipeline to have our production database take the shape of whatever is in our migrations history. So by way of example here, we have got these address fields that have been put into place by, by way of this SQL file here, but it's not yet affecting our database. So let's run this npx prisma migrate deploy. All right, and so all migrations have been successfully applied. We can go and confirm that over in Prisma Studio here. Let's refresh. And then if we take a look over here at the fields, we've got some new ones. So these are the fields that have been put into place through that latest migration. And so again, the idea here is that we're not going to use this command, the migrate deploy command, if we're working locally. But this is something that we would run in our CIDC pipelines or however it is that we affect our remote environments. So these are some of the initial steps of working with Prisma Migrate. We can get a sense of what's on the Migrate command in terms of options if we run npx Prisma Migrate, which is not going to itself do anything, but rather it's going to give us a list of what we can do with Prisma Migrate and any options that might be on those commands. Now, a common issue with Prisma Migrate is that we can get ourselves into a state where a migration fails to deploy. And in those cases, we might need to roll back a migration and try to resolve it. So let's just see if we can get ourselves into a state here where we can replicate something. All right, so over here, what I'm going to do is we've got our user model. For email, let's do this. Let's add the unique directive to say that email should be unique. Okay, so let's save this. And before we run anything, before we do any new commands, let's come over to our studio area. And I'm going to take Alice's email here, copy it and put it into Bob's email. So just a manual step of duplicating an email. And you can probably see where this is going. We've got duplicate records now, but this change that we want to make here is going to say that email should be unique. So what we can do here to demo how this is going to work, we can run npx prisma migrate dev. We can also do this, pass a name flag. So previously we would run the command and then issue a name, but we can just do this, name as a flag, add unique, and that'll give us a name right away. So let's hit enter on this. All right, so the message that we get now is a warning to start with, and it says that a unique constraint covering this field is gonna fail, it's gonna cause the whole migration to fail if we have duplicate records. So let's say we're kind of thinking, well, there's probably no duplicate records in place, we should be fine, let's go ahead and run the migration. So we'll hit Y for that and we'll see what happens. What we get is this giant red error. And so let's take a look here. It says a migration failed to apply and new migrations cannot be applied before this error is resolved. And so what we'll find with Prisma Migrate is that we need to deal with errors when they come up before we can move forward. We we need to make resolutions for any issues that we've run into with Prisma Migrate before we can move ahead. 
We get some more logging down here, and that is telling us exactly what the issue is, which is that the email of alice at example.com is duplicated. So how could we deal with this error? Well, one way is we could go over to our database and just make sure that we take care of duplicates directly in the database. We could run some scripts for that, assuming there's probably lots of duplicates in many situations. We could run some scripting to take care of those situations. That's a bit of a manual step. The other thing we could do is we could say, well, okay, let's maybe not make this field unique at this point. But to take care of the migrate step to resolve that, what we need to do is roll back the migration. And the way that we can do that is to use Prisma Migrate Resolve. NPX Prisma Migrate Resolve. And then this is what it looks like. We pass this flag, rolled back. Then we want to pass what the name of the migration is that we want to affect. And that's going to be this here. So usually what I do is I come in, grab the whole name of the folder like this. So we've grabbed that folder name, copied it to the clipboard, then rolled back. Actually, we don't need the equal sign. It's just like this, rolled back, and then in quotes, the name of that folder, the name of that migration. And what that will do is it'll go into the Prisma migrations table. It's going to find that migration specifically, and it's going to mark it as rolled back. And so then what we can do is we can say, okay, let's not put the unique directive on email. Let's allow ourselves to have duplicate emails. That's another option. Then maybe we go and resolve the duplicates in some other process, and then we can come back later and put the unique directive back on. All right, so those are some of the first things that we usually do when we deal with Prisma Migrate. The very last thing to show here is over in table plus, and what we can see here is the migration history. So we've got the migration name here, We've got details about when it finished at, and this is where we can also track migrations that have gone into the database. Now, importantly here, things need to match generally between our migrations history that we have in our migrations directory and what's listed here. Now, there might be some of these migrations that are marked as rolled back like we saw, and there might be some other things going on with the records that maybe look a little bit different. But in general, the migrations directory should be something that we don't delete things from, we don't touch in that way. And instead, we try to fix moving forward with new resolutions instead of trying to undo history in the migrations directory. So hopefully this quick look at migrations with Prisma has been useful. If you've got any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web, or you can reach out to us on x slash Twitter. We're at Prisma there. Thanks for watching.